Deir el Kamar, Syriac origin, Deir Saro, meaning, the convent of the moon, Arabeized towards the 9th century. To stroll around Deir al Kamar in the Shuf region is to admire the pride of the monuments of the city of the Emirs and contemplate the Lebanon of yesteryear from one of the most beautiful squares in the Middle East. Surrounded by historic palaces and decorated with a typical 19th century fountain, the Medan is a place steeped in history, culture, and music. The small paved alleys lined with old Lebanese houses accentuate the picturesque charm of this village. Former capital of the Principality of Mount Lebanon, the village of Deir el Kamar is a site classified as National Historic Monument since 1945 and nominated, with the valley and palaces of Bayt el Din as well as the Cedars of Baruch, for inscription on UNESCO's World Heritage List. The Palace of the Emir Yusuf Chahab, al Saraya. Today houses Deir al Kamar's Municipal Council. It was built in two phases and was finally completed by the Emir Melhem Chahab and was the seat of local government during the 18th century. Before its destruction by the Ottomans, the lower floor designed in Amman style was the Palace of the Emir Fakral Din I. It later became the first soap factory in Lebanon and then was turned into a factory to dye silks and cotton. Yet later, during the Shahabist era, it became a stable. Then between 1943 and 1976 this floor was transformed into a state prison. The Church of Our Lady of the Hill Built in the 5th century by the monk Nicholas Masadi over the ruins of an old Phoenician temple dedicated to the goddess Astarte, the church was destroyed by an earthquake in 859 then reconstructed by the Order of the Templars during the Crusaders' occupation of the region. It was again destroyed by the Saracens and rebuilt once more during the reign of Fakhuddin I Mon, 1518-1544. In 1673, Sheikh Abu Fares Karam of Aden, Amir Ahmed Mon's secretary, and his brother Sheikh Abu Nader enlarged the church by building a solid main structure and vault. Later under the reign of Bachir II Chahab, 1789 to 1840, more work was carried out to enlarge and restore the edifice leaving it very much as it appears today. In the year 1929, a person named Yaqub al-Kabushi decided to build a monument to the cross on the highest hill in Deir al kamar He collected 6,000 francs and paved the way from the town square to the hill. Archbishop Augustine al-Bastani endowed the land of the hill, which extends over an area of 8,000 meters, as a wakaf for this work, which he considered solemn. It ended up building a chapel alongside the cross. This mountain was called the Rope of the Cross in relation to the cross on its top.
Located about 10 kilometers southeast of Beit el Din, Maktara was from the 17th century the stronghold of the Jumblat family. Crossed by a spring, the building emerges from an ocean of greenery. Four giant yew trees stand tall in the middle of the large courtyard on either side of the river. The residence, rebuilt in the 19th century, combines Oriental and Italian architectural influences. It was built on an older structure destroyed in 1825 during the battles between the Druze sheikhs and Bashir II. It was there that Kamal Jumblat, a Lebanese politician, leader of the Druze community and leader of the Progressive Socialist Party, lived. Although not part of the tourist itineraries, the palace can be visited. It houses a remarkable collection of oriental crafts, the Kamal Jumblat Museum, works of art and mosaics.
Badaran Castle Built on the ruins of a Roman citadel dating from the 6th century. In 1720 it was restored and expanded by Sheikh Ali Jumbulat, the founder of the Jumbulat family in Mount Lebanon. Due to Badaran's strategic location on top of a hill, the castle was the refuge of rebels and fighters since the Roman era. Today nature is taking over the castle, it is in ruins and needs extensive restoration.
For centuries Bedouins and mountain shepherds wore the abaya. Now, thanks to the talent of enterprising designers this garment has made its way into the high fashion scene. Traditionally a man's square, generously cut outfit, the abaya served as cloak, blanket, and coat. Today, hand-woven abayas are as much a status symbol as they are worn to keep warm. Among the many traditional activities still running throughout the country, abaya making is one of the most fascinating and time-honored, incorporating a piece of history in every one of its threads. It is not common to find a traditional abaya weaver who still works the silk or wool the way our ancestors did. Nazibaz grew up watching his grandfather make fabric and embroider it with silver and gold thread in the most captivating designs and techniques. His village, Badaran, is famed for its weaving and combination of design and style. In 1979, Baz inherited the family business. He manufactures abayas and other textiles using the century-old loom that requires a special technique he learned from his grandfather. Baz can use up to 24 petals to operate the weaving machine. Concentration, patience and taste are the three main ingredients needed to create an ideal product. The exertion of this activity became more than just work to Baz, who defines it as music where each twine has a note of its own. Although he is a firm believer in maintaining tradition, Baz has started a creation of modern handmade accessories such as wallets, cell phone cases, makeup bags, jewelry boxes, and more, designed for tourists as well as youngsters with reduced budgets. Ancient historical paths in Badaran contains antiquities and facilities such as ancient grape presses, Ein Almara and wooden looms. <laughs> 